Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you a rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the average amount of time you'll want to be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as a treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. So this is a pretty lengthy story. This rhythm alone has been known to throw my students off, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at it and see if you got it right. One of the first things I like to do when I'm identifying a rhythm is to actually find out how fast it's going. So I'm going to go ahead and count these R waves. So I have 9 R waves there, which means the heart rate is roughly 90 BPM. Next thing I'll do is I'll examine the QRS complex. These QRS complexes are very, very narrow, meaning that this rhythm is likely originating from above the ventricle. The presence of a P wave further confirms this. My R to R interval here, if you'll notice, is also very, very consistent. A nice regular pattern. There is one unusual feature to this rhythm though, and this is the thing that gets overlooked by my students at all, all the time. If you'll notice here, these are actually extra P waves. These aren't U waves, as U waves tend to be a little bit more subtle in appearance, and they tend to be a little bit later on after the T wave. So because I have extra P waves, this is immediately going to make me think that this is some kind of heart block. Now when I'm thinking about the criteria for heart blocks, extra P waves with a missed QRS complex would help me narrow that down to one of the second degree heart blocks. Now if you remember from your training or from prior experiences with static cardiology or EKG recognition, the two different types of secondary heart block are differentiated by the PR interval. In our secondary type 1 or Wankybach heart block, the PR interval continues to get longer and longer before a drop off in beat. Our secondary type 2 has no change in PR interval. So because of that, I would diagnose this as a secondary type 2 or a Mobitz 2 heart block. Now, full disclosure, technically, because I cannot see a PR interval progression, you could also say that this is a second degree type 1. However, so we don't muddy the waters, we're just going to call it a second degree type 2, and on a static cardiology test or during an EMS testing environment, they would consider this a second degree type 2 as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual scenario and see if this is stable or unstable. So we're dispatched out to a private residence for a 25-year-old female who's been reporting episodes of fatigue and lightheadedness ongoing for the last two days. She denies any pertinent medical history but reports that she spent the last month hiking in the Catskill Mountains. And for those of you who don't know, uh, the Catskill Mountains are a mountain range, a very heavily wooded area in southeastern New York State. It's actually a beautiful part of the country. She is currently alert and oriented, denies any shortness of breath, and denies any injury or trauma. 
Your partner obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure of 118 over 70, pulse of 90, respiratory rate of 19, blood sugar of 102, and a temperature of 101 degrees Fahrenheit. While attaching the monitor, you notice a large round bullseye rash on her lower abdomen. So when deciding if a patient is stable or unstable, I use the acronym CHAD. This stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration in mental status, and dyspnea. Based on my patient's signs and symptoms as well as her vital signs, she meets none of the criteria for CHAD. Because of this, my final diagnosis for static cardiology is going to be a stable second degree type 2 AV block. Now, the interesting thing about her case is she was hiking in an area of the country that's known to have Lyme disease. You're also noticing the presence of a round bullseye rash on her abdomen. This is otherwise known as erythema migrans or erythera migrans, depending on who you talk to, tomato, tomato. Lyme disease is one of the few causes of second degree type 2 heart blocks in otherwise healthy patients. So it wouldn't be uncommon for somebody with Lyme disease to present with a rhythm that's outside of the norm. This, however, won't affect your treatment. So let's go ahead and talk about that next. So just like all my other static cardiology cards, I'll begin my treatment by regurgitating the mantra Scene Safe BSI IVO2 Monitor. Now, because she's stable and has a perfusing heart rate, there's not a whole lot we're gonna do for this patient. She's not bradycardic, so I don't need to touch anything. All I would simply do for this patient is a 12 lead, IV fluids, and then maybe some antipyretics to manage some of the fever. Other than that, rapid transport. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And remember, you can make your own custom playlist using my videos to help you practice for your national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.